Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today. My name is Kayla K. Shields and I'm a marketing associate for Deco Network. With us today is Deco Network consultant Zach Dewhurst. As a Deco Network consultant, Zach uses his 10 plus years of experience to help other garment decoration businesses become more efficient and profitable through the implementation of Deco Network and other custom tailored strategies. For today's webinar, Zach will be giving a step-by-step -step guide on how to get started with Deco Network. Throughout the webinar, if you have any questions for Zach, feel free to write and send those questions to us in the chat. We'll be going over your questions at the end of the webinar with a Q&A session. With that said, Zach, what do you have for us today? Thank you, Kay. And like she said, today's conversation is going to be an introduction to Deco Network. So whether you have already signed up for Deco or you're on the fence, this uh, presentation should help you. The way I'd like to start is a basic who, what, when, where, why, how of Deco Network. So in its plainest terms, what is Deco Network? Well, it is e-commerce and order management software for custom printing and embroidery businesses that revolves around making them more efficient in the production space and opening new revenue routes through affiliate websites. It will organize your production workflow and help you grow your sales through multiple sales channels, in this case, e-commerce sites. Who's integrated with Deco Network? Well, over 10,000 products from vendors like Sanmar, Alpha Broder, and SNS Activewear. You can process payments, whether they're in person or on a website, using payment gateways like PayPal and Stripe. You can integrate QuickBooks so all of your revenue that flows through Deco Network is officially book kept in QuickBooks, and you can integrate with ShipStation for shipping all of your orders with ease. And who should sign up for Deco Network software? Well, established decoration businesses of any size. Deco Network has multiple plans to choose from. So whether you're a, a two-person mom and pop shop starting out in the garage or basement, or you're a 50 person company, Deco Network has the plan for your business. The only recommendation I make, who's used the software for over 11 years, is that you make sure you have an established business. Don't sign up for uh, software if you're not ready uh, because you really wanna have the orders coming in to make yourself efficient. Don't think that just signing up for software is going to be what makes or breaks your business. So, let's show you how Deco Network works. Deco Network can, is very robust software and can often be overwhelming for new signups. And the best thing you can do is try to simplify the software as much as possible. There are many features and applications you can use, but they may not pertain to your business at that moment. And you have needs and you have wants. I would focus on getting the things that you need configured and grow with the software over time. You don't want to spend months trying to learn Deco Network. Uh, you want to start utilizing it as quickly as possible. So a good way to look at Deco Network is there are three primary sections. And what we're looking at right now is called Business Hub. And this is our order management system. Once the software is up and running, you spend all your time in Business Hub uh, handling all of your production and your customer profiles. Business Hub is broken into three primary sections, sales and service, production, and customers. Again, once you have the software configured and up and running, your entire staff is gonna really just spend their time in Business Hub. And we're gonna come back and demonstrate Business Hub towards the end of our conversation. Now, the second section of Deco Network is called the admin. The admin is where we have all of the settings that drive the software. And these settings revolve around the different decoration processes that a decoration business offers, the blank products that can be decorated with those decoration processes, and the general settings like taxes, shipping, and payment gateway that you would be configuring on any e-commerce platform. The third section is the websites. 
So the admin drives what's possible on Business Hub and the websites. Now, if you're on the premium or enterprise plan, you have up to 500 websites on the premium and unlimited on the enterprise plan. The standard plan comes just with one site. It is important to know that every website on your account works exactly the same way. There is nothing different between your primary website and every other website you launch. They're just typically used for different purposes. Your primary website is essentially yourcustominc.com, while the websites you provide to your clients are typically used as either a fundraising tool or as an ordering portal. And it will make life much easier for all parties. As far as the websites go, they do not take a whole lot of experience. It is easy as drag and drop. What you see is what you get. If you have questions on how to design a website or anything within Deco Network, there are many great support tools. First, you can always come up to the top and you can search and you would be amazed how many great help articles and videos Deco Network has produced to make setting up any setting within the software uh, as simple as really kind of following an article. If the article does not do what you're looking for, come over to the question mark. You're going to find other resources right here. And third, you can always raise a support ticket to contact client services. Client services is there to help you work through problems and answer questions. They're not going to build you a website or build products, but they are a great tool that you want to take advantage of. All right, so let's talk about the admin because it's what essentially all of the settings drive Business Hub, our order management system, and the websites, whether they be one on the standard plan, 500 on the premium, or unlimited on the enterprise. The decoration processes um, essentially can be whatever you need them to be. Um, you ha can have up to six decoration processes. And if you don't see that Deco has exclusively listed one, don't assume that it can't be offered, such as Deco Network does not say laser engraving it is already built in or wide format printing. But there's nothing that is preventing you from uploading an image of a product and then saying you can engrave this and this is how the price is calculated based on the decoration. When it comes to screen printing, we count colors. So the price settings revolve around how many colors are in the artwork and how many pieces are being printed. We account for the white underbase and can even charge an additional color when necessary. Embroidery revolves around the size of the artwork and thus how many stitches are necessary to sew that design. When it comes to embroidery, there are over 100 embroidery fonts available. So if your customer just wants to add text, you don't even have to charge them a digitizing fee and you can download a sew ready file that can go immediately into the embroidery machine. All of the other decoration processes outside of screen printing and embroidery work fairly similar and they're more of a CMYK digital print method in the fact that we can change the price based on the size of the graphic and or the color of the product. So for DTG, if I want to charge more to print a larger print because it's going to cost me more, I can. If at the same time I want to charge more to print on a black shirt versus a white shirt because I have to pre-treat, excuse me, lay the underbase, I absolutely can. Um, again, know that you know maybe you're adding direct to film printing there is no difference um, between dtg and dtf and how you would price it um, if you can again account for the size and or the color of the garment each process then is summarized down here in the decoration pricing section and what you will do is you create your tables for each process and then you can assign it here, and that is what will be used. Now, if you're on the premium or enterprise level, you do have what are called price levels. And the contract price levels allows you 
to make multiple price tables for different processes and then assign which table is used for each level. You can then go back to Business Hub into a customer's profile and assign them a particular price level. That way, when they log into the software or we're putting together an order for them manually in Business Hub, it is automatically using their contract pricing. And that contract price level can change based on the decoration process or the next section, the products. So when it comes to the products, you, we again integrate with many suppliers like Alpha, Sanmar, SMS. And it's as easy as coming into the select catalog section and selecting which plier, suppliers you want to add. And a lot of these suppliers, they carry the same brands. So you can even choose just which brands you want to select from a supplier so you don't have a ton of overlap. After you've selected which catalog and suppliers you want to use, you can easily apply a product markup. And just like I mentioned, I can charge a different markup on blanks for one price level versus a different price level. Also back here, I can configure the default decoration areas for certain processes. So like embroidery, we typically embroider the left and the right chest, maybe the back yoke collar area sleeves, um, but maybe you don't want to screen print or DTG hats. But then this decoration areas, you can set the default settings. And again, remember that there are a lot of settings throughout the software, and it's important to not get too caught up with everything. When you sign up for Deco Network, you get a one-on-one -on -one orientation with someone like myself who has used the software um, themselves and I still use the software as a screen printer, direct to garment, embroidery, sublimation. I'd still do it all, but I really enjoy working with uh, a lot of users of the software and teaching them how to get the most out of it. So again, try to just focus on what's important and um, take advantage of the orientation. A big mistake is when someone signs up for Deco, they're given an opportunity to talk to someone like myself who has a lot of experience and can quickly guide you in just an hour uh, what exactly needs to be configured. Now, when I introduce someone to the software, I always stress that 95% of the setup is establishing a core product mix. So right now I have all of Sanmar's catalog and one brand of Alpha, one brand of SNS. And before you know it, we have thousands of products, which is very overwhelming if you want to uh, let the customer to select one on your website. Typically on your primary website, your customink.com, for lack of a better terms, you want your customer to select a product in as few clicks as possible. And then once they've selected a product, you want them to request a quote or place an order. That is what makes you money. You don't really want to distract the customer with a bunch of other information. So what I can't stress enough is whether you're using Business Hub, your primary website or affiliate websites, the products themselves do all of the talking. I don't want to talk about how I'm some great screen printer. I want the customer to select a product and then request a quote or place an order. And if you go to customink.com, for example, or any of the other big brands, they don't offer thousands of products to their customers. They offer an easy to navigate mix that satisfies around 80% of what is demanded. So what we do in Deco Network is we want all of our products to be available for internal use. So we can apply a bulk action in which all of our products are only available in Business Hub. So by default, I want everything I get my hands on for internal purposes. Anybody can walk into the shop and ask me, you know, or, or look at my catalog and I can um, create a custom quota order. 
But on the website, I wanna make it as easy as possible for the bulk of customers. So what I tell everybody is 95% of setting up the software is establishing that core product mix. So first thing I typically do is I put all my products in one master category. And this category is all for internal purposes. And then I wanna create my own categories and subcategories that will make it easy for the customer to make a selection. So if you're a printing business and you really wanna think like a customer, what are the key terms that they're gonna see? Well, when we print, we print a lot of t-shirts. We also typically print a lot of unisex sweatshirts. I like to let the women shop their own section and I like to keep the youth separate. When it comes to embroidery, we primarily embroider polos, hats, jackets, and I like accessories as a catch-all. I would not exceed more than 12 primary categories, but think like your customer. Again, the goal is in as few clicks as possible to select a product within one of these categories and then do something with it. And remember, you're really paying Deco Network for the tools that are embedded within the software. So on your website, you have many great tools and they revolve around the product filter tool the two quote tools, whether they want to request a quote and you get back to them or an instant quote, and the design tool. My goal is to get the customer to select a product and then utilize one of our interactive tools that we're already paying Deco for. Once you've created your categories, you then want to break them down into subcategories that make sense for your customer. And again, if you're a printing and embroidery business, just like custom ink offers, you want probably around 250-ish products, give or take 50. So you're going to have multiple subcategories typically on each, uh, each product group. So like t-shirts, for example, I like to break it down by value. Good, better, best. And that will allow the customer to navigate and find the product that fits their budget and satisfies their wants and needs. So for each product that you really want to push on your websites, I highly recommend taking a second and making sure that it decorates exactly the way you want to offer it. So it's as easy as searching for a product. We'll do the Gildan 2000 from Sandmore. And after you've selected a product, you want to put it in the category that you created that makes sense. Look at it this way. Right now, when you start, all your products are in one big pile of thousands and your core mix is getting lost. If you take the time to assign your product to a category, everything's going to work easier on your websites. And thus, you're not going to have so much back and forth with the customer that all of us want to try to avoid. Secondly, after I've categorized a product, I want to make sure it decorates exactly the way I would decorate the product. So I can control which processes are available and where those areas on a product are. If you take the time to categorize a product and make sure the decoration areas are set up the way you need them to be, everything will work significantly better, whether it be on Business Hub, your primary website, or the affiliate websites. 95% of setting up Deco Network software is just establishing a core product mix to push. I know I'm being very redundant, but it is the biggest mistake I always see is uh, new licensees who sign up for Deco, they kind of skip this portion, and everybody wants to they often say, I want to be custom ink. Well, custom ink doesn't offer thousands of products and they didn't set up uh, their software behind the scenes in just an hour. Take the time to put together your core product mix and you'll be smooth sailing from there. All right, so outside of configuring your decoration processes and how the price changes based on the variables, 
and establishing a core product mix that correlate with those processes, you have general settings that, again, there are a few that must be configured and several others that down the line you can implement further. The big things you need to be able to do is you need to be able to process a payment and you're gonna set up a payment gateway. PayPal, Stripe, Authorize.net are the most popular, um, but there are several others you can uh, integrate with. Outside of payment, we need to be able to ship orders and shipping is two steps and Deco Network accounts for both perfectly. Step one is to quote the customer a price when they're in the checkout phase, or if we're putting together to order together in Business Hub. And we can integrate with live shipping methods like the post office, FedEx, UPS, stamps.com. And that allows us to generate a price during checkout based on how far the order's traveling, the weight of the order, and we can even estimate the dimensions of all the shirts boxed together and what that's gonna cost. And you can even apply a markup to cover your handling and packaging fees. So Deco makes it real easy for us to show the, uh, a realistic price at checkout. And then the second phase of shipping is actually buying and printing the label, which is at the very end of the production process. And for that, Deco is integrated with ShipStation.com and it makes it extremely easy to buy and print the label. And then the customer is automatically emailed the tracking and it really couldn't be more efficient. So to recap, the admin settings, Drive, Business Hub, the order management system, and what we can do on the websites. You must get your decoration processes configured first. You want to establish a core product mix and you must get your payment uh, method, shipping and taxes configured. Then you can keep going on from there. But if you want to start utilizing the software real quickly, just take care of those quick things and then grow with it. All right, so let's go over to Business Hub. Again, Business Hub is our order management system and every shop who is signing up for Deco should already have orders coming in. And most software is, that businesses sign up for, it's all about making them more efficient and saving them money. Business Hub should reduce a lot of redundancy and labor that you're having to pay for. And it's gonna make you again, more efficient and organized, reduce your mistakes and help you grow as a company. Business Hub, again, is broken into three sections, sales and service, which is really where I create my quotes from scratch. Production, which is where every order flows into, whether I've created it or it comes from any of our websites on our fulfillment center. And then again, we have our customer profiles down here. You also will notice that there's a companies section. It's important to know that a customer and a company is not B2C and B2B. A company is when we have a hierarchy or multiple contacts for a client. If you work with schools, which a lot of us do in the industry, you have a school district and then you also have the individuals making pur purchases. The school district is the company. The individuals who are making purchases are contacts slash customers underneath the company. I can set, for example, account terms for a company, like I can give them net 30 terms and those terms will pass on to all of those underneath the company. I can also, for those who I have assigned to be a part of the company, I can set their role. So sometimes, you know, if again, I'm working with a school a teacher might just be someone who makes purchases and they're just, their role, I'll show you how I can edit it. Their role is just as a customer. Then you might have somebody who's a manager and what you want them to do is you want them to see all the email notifications for all orders placed by anybody who's a part of the company. And then maybe you have the accounting department. So, you know, a school district needs to be sent the invoices and if I make someone the payments, um, and I can even edit which emails they get, 
that way they're being sent the invoices and really only the stuff that pertains to them. So a company, again, is when we have a hierarchy for a client, it will um, really help you, again, keep yourself organized and it can work with schools, businesses, and organizations. But not everybody has to be set up with a company account. Everything we store in a customer or company is also available in a customer's account. For every customer account, we are keeping track of all quotes, orders, designs, anything we have uploaded for the customer ourselves in Business Hub, or they have uploaded when placing an order or through their profile. The customer can log in using their account credentials, which allows them to access pretty much everything we see up here. It just looks a bit different. They can approve quotes, check the status of an order. I mean, most things we can do on retail sites when you're logged into a profile. If I go into a customer's account details, this is again where I can put a customer on discount, make them tax exempt, give them credit, make them an account holder. If they are an account holder, I need to set their terms and their maximum outstanding balance before I cut them off. I can also assign them a contract price level and a sales team member to be a part of their uh, group. Okay, most of the time after I've selected a customer's profile, I'm going to create a quote or an order. And with Deco Network, there's a lot of logic throughout the software. We're going to work our way down this left hand column as we process an order. So a lot of the times, if I'm working with the business, it starts with a quote. And at the top of a quote, I can put in a job name. I can also put in a customer's purchase order among several other things I can figure up here. But those are the two that you typically uh, potentially update. And then it comes down to creating line items for a quote or an order. To create a line item, there's one of three methods. You can add a previously ordered product which is anything that the customer's ever ordered or you have ever quoted. It can be very helpful um, to add anything that, again, has been previously ordered and you don't have to start from scratch. Secondly, you can add a free form product. A free form product is you typesetting what the customer's ordered. So maybe it was the Gildan 2000 t-shirt, the color was black, we had a two color screen print on the left chest. We charge $10 a shirt. I can break down my sizes. And if I click on the gear, I can attach an actual image of the artwork or the mock-up. A free form product is more of a last resort situation. It'll get the job done, but it's not telling us the entire story. What you really want to do is kind of do exactly what a customer does, and that is select a product. And after you've selected a product, add artwork to it. For each decoration process, we're accounting for different variables. So when I load it into the design tool and I go to add a design, I can choose between all of the decoration methods we've configured in the admin but it's important to remember that each one is gonna configure the price differently. Screen printing is gonna count colors. Um, DTG, maybe you again, have it based on the color of the uh, garment and or the size of the print. Screen printing is the most common decoration process in the industry. So we're gonna add a screen print design and I'm gonna select a design I've already uploaded. And this is a PNG, it's not a vector. If I upload a vector, I can easily scale the design without any problems. Even if I upload a bitmap, which this is, I the Deco Network will I, help me identify how many colors are in the design. After it's identified the colors, I can then choose to change them if I would like. You can see that there is a quality bar here. It's the same thing on the website. So if I upload a bitmap and then I go to start stretching it, I'm gonna be warned, hey, this, this artwork is uh, gonna be a little pixelated. And the customers, again, told this several times, hey, uh, be careful, don't be surprised if we have to hit you with an artwork fee afterward. 
right now I'm on a black shirt, or I'm sorry, royal blue shirt. This is a two color plus an underbase. If I were to change to a white shirt, it's just two colors. I don't need an underbase for that. So Deco Network, again, it, they, the software has been around for over a decade. They account for a lot of different variables. Um, it, it's definitely not something that was created last week. It, it is well, and people like myself have given feedback on how to improve the software. And that's one of my favorite things about Deco is that they do value the feedback from their users and are constantly improving the software. And they're very open about what is to come. And um, it, again, it, it, I'm a little biased. The software is always improving. Now this is a screen print and I'm not gonna screen print one. If, if you look right here, this is the decoration price. It's 980, in this case, that's a two color plus an underbase. And you can even see, here's our screen setup fees and we have an artwork fee to vectorize this artwork. But that 980, it's gonna change based on the quantity of pieces. So if I change this to 36 pieces, for example, the unit print price falls to 835. I could even come over here to the gear. If I copied a line item, watch the unit print price fall because it's independent of which line item it is as long as the artwork is the same. I didn't make my next break. So let's change it to 100 here. Both are 780. They're both linked. If I unlink them, then they'll be independent. Maybe the customer wants a different color shirt. Maybe they just want a different garment completely. I'll use a ladies or a youth. It does not matter as long as the artwork is the same, the unit decoration price goes across the line items. Once you're happy with your quote or order, you're ready to then send it to the customer. So what I typically do is hit save an email quote, and that's gonna send the customer an email with a link to log into their account and approve the quote. A quote does not become an order until two things occur. One, payment terms must be met. I'm on net 15, I'm making the terms. Secondly, the customer must approve the quote. So if I mark this quote as approved, a quote becomes an official order. Now, once you're in order, you really are moving your, your way down into the production section of the software. And here in the overview, you can see what the status of the order. In this case, here's our order at the top. We've not ordered the blank products from Sandmar. We have not received the blank products from Sandmar. Our art department has not vectorized the artwork for production and thus we have not produced or shipped the order. And this should be a very similar life cycle um, that you're used to. You, you can't print what you don't have. So you've got to get the blank and you have to get the artwork ready. So I'm going to just refresh. Oh, sorry. So the first step in the production process is to order the blank product. And we're going to do that by coming into our purchase order section. And you, will, you can raise purchase orders for any of the suppliers. And when you're here, you're really downloading or placing a direct order with Sanmar, Alpha, or SNS, which all have live ordering capabilities and you're gathering orders over a period of time. So again, I can place a purchase order for all of the orders that have came in for a supplier since the last time I raised a purchase order. Another way you can do it is you can raise a purchase order per order. So if I come back up to this order, I can click raise purchase order and I can buy this by itself. If you're a larger shop, 
Uh, typically, you might um, have special terms with some of the suppliers and you can place an individual PO for each order. So I'm just gonna click save purchase order. And to essentially order these products, I have one of two options. One, I can download a PDF right here, which will give me a breakdown of everything I need to order. Or two, I can go to send purchase order and I can do a live send with suppliers like Alpha, SNS, and Sandmar. And that will send the list of everything I need to order directly to that supplier. And you're done. No needing to log in to Sanmar, SNS, or Alpha and have to place the order yourself, um, which again, there's always a chance to um, run into a mistake there. So by uh, downloading the PDF or sending the purchase order, we have accounted for the fact that we have ordered the blank products. That's the first step of processing an order. But we still are waiting for the blanks to be received. So until they arrive at the shop, you can't decorate them. And what you're typically doing is you're getting the artwork ready for production. So maybe you're vectorizing for screen printing, you're digitizing for embroidery. If I come here to artwork approvals, it lists all of the artwork that needs to be essentially prepped for decoration. I can easily come in here and view. I can download, in this case, my bitmap, and then I could upload the vector and it's stored within this order for all future orders. Once I've uploaded the artwork, I could send it back to the customer for their approval, or I can just use this section for internal purposes and mark it as approved, which will again update here in the overview and the artwork is good to go. Now, let's look at the production section itself. And hopefully I haven't lost anybody yet. But when it comes to production, there's a calendar view and there is a list view. The calendar view is more for scheduling jobs and making sure you're always hitting your deadlines and you're keeping your staff busy. In my experience, the production manager is the primary person looking at the calendar view to schedule jobs and it's also how um, the production staff can know which order they're supposed to work on first. The list view is sometimes easier to look at because it shows a list of all your orders. And the list are broken into three sections. Production complete is obviously finished orders. Then you have a waiting production and not ready for production. And a good way to look at it is there's just three different queues not ready for production means we have not received the blank products and or we don't have the artwork ready for decoration. In this case, we're still awaiting for the blank products to arrive. Awaiting production means we have the product on hand, the artwork is good to go. Meaning if we have equipment and labor available we can be working on that order at this moment. So if I come back over to our purchase orders and I come over here and I receive stock and that is accounting for the blanks arriving at the shop and I can select, you know, only what was received. But by receiving that order, We've accounted for it here, and now we're ready for production, which the order has gone from not ready for production into a waiting production. Anything I can do in a waiting production, I can do in not ready for production. And that is what you typically will do is you'll sort by what new orders have I not downloaded the information for. So I like to sort by have I downloaded the order? And we have other parameters here and each person who has an account can choose what those parameters are. And that'll allow me to sort and filter, you know, I'm looking for screen print orders that have not downloaded and I want them organized um, by what's due the soonest. So it's really nice in this list view to be able to sort and filter and you can do similar stuff as well in the calendar view. 
it's definitely going to take a little bit of playing around and molding um, essentially how you want to use uh, the production management system. Every shop is different in size and has previous methods to processing an order. Um, so it, it's, again, it just takes a little bit of practice. Anything you've ever used, you were better at it um, after doing it a few times and not the first. So don't get discouraged if you start processing orders and it's not making uh, complete sense. There's a lot of helpful videos you can refer to. And again, if you hadn't taken advantage of the orientation, reach out to DECO or client services and you're going to be able to um, get a little bit more training here. But what I'm going to do, you know, I sorted my orders. I can then download all of the orders that I have sorted and I can download the production worksheets. So what most shops do is they download all of their order worksheets. And then as the blank shirts come in, they match them together. And I can do the same thing by clicking on an order. If I click on an order, I can download the production worksheet. And what I was just showing, I can do it across multiple orders at once. And this production worksheet is going to be what the production staff needs to know how to complete this order. In this case, we're decorating 36 Gildan 2000 shirts. These are the colors that it, it's going with. It needs to be completed by this date. There's other notes that can be contained on this production worksheet, but I mean, really, th this is the key. You need the worksheet and, oh, sorry. Oh. We're going to go back, get back to business zone. The production worksheet and the artwork can both be downloaded as a bulk action or when I click into the order. So again, right here, download the order worksheet. And second, right here is where I can download my production file. If it's embroidery and text was already the only thing that was uploaded, it'll be so ready. If uh, someone just put text for um, printing, it'll download as a perfect vector. Once an order has been completed, I can just simply come here, check it, and I mark it as production complete. By marking an order as complete, it moves from the production into the shipping queue. And at this point, what most shops do is they're integrated with ShipStation. And through ShipStation, I can easily buy and print a label, whether it be FedEx, Post Office, UPS. And the order is updated within Business Hub, and the customer is sent the tracking information automatically. They really could not be easier. If I go back up to the original order, I can view several things. First, I can view the history notes. Each step that we take here is being recorded and telling a story of the order. The payment section is where I can add a payment, whether it's cash, check, credit, uh, bank transfer. I can also email a payment request, which sends the customer a link to log in to our gateway and put in their credit card information themselves. You can also add a refund to an order or credit to a customer's account. You can view the production status of an order and you can download a lot of the different sheets that I've been going through. You can look at the financial breakdown, which includes any commissions that were paid to an affiliate and the communication history that you've been going back and forth with the customer. Simply put, Business Hub takes repetition. With each order that you process, it gets easier and easier. To recap all of Deco Network, don't hesitate reaching out to client services when you have questions or problems. There's a lot of great resources uh, through the help articles and videos that Deco Network has taken the time to put together. And if you um, find yourself wanting extra help or you want to get up and running, quicker, 
that's where someone like myself is available for website design, uh, training of your staff, or again, consulting and problem solving. I've helped hundreds of businesses who signed up for Deco Network um, build their websites, configure products that aren't on the software, and a lot of other things. Just because Deco Network doesn't exclusively say it's possible, don't assume that it's not. Um, that's where someone like myself is available to help you problem solve and get the most out of Deco Network software. If Deco Network isn't saving you time um, with production, or if you're not um, growing your business through um, your website, you need to look at it and, and ask yourself, um, have you taken the time and gotten everything properly configured to put you in the best position for success? The software is very powerful and Spider-Man's about to come out this week. And with great power comes great responsibility. Um, this software can be very intimidating at first. Um, take the time, attend an orientation. After you sign up, someone like myself will put you on a great path. And if you need more help, it is available. Hopefully you guys find this presentation helpful. And with that, let's open up to questions. Yes, let's go into our Q&A session. So I do want to go ahead and remind everyone that if you do have any questions for Zach that you would like us to answer on this webinar, feel free to go ahead and submit them in the chat and we will address them now. Zach, we do have a question for you um, from Greg Norton. He asked, can a product be listed in more than one category, such as men's and shirts? Yes, yes, blank products can be um, added to as many product categories as you would like. Yes. That's really cool. So if anyone else has any questions that they would like Zach to answer, we can take some time now. Um, feel free to go ahead and drop them in the chat and we'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Zach, this presentation was awesome. Thank you. Yes. So I have to ask, what is your favorite feature about Deco Network? It, it, it has to be Business Hub. Um, I, I, I signed up for the software when I was 20 years old, and I love the idea of having multiple websites and all of that. But, at, at, you know, software at its core, most of the time, we're using it for either entertainment purposes or efficiency purposes. Mm -hmm. And not everybody, you know, conducts just a lot of website sales. A lot of existing businesses are have a lot of revenue with no e-commerce presence. And that's where I think um, Business Hub is my favorite because whether you're a small shop or a large shop, if you have orders coming in, Business Hub is gonna make your life easier. And you, you process a few orders through it, it it's everything is going to be um, much more organized um, and also make life a lot easier for future orders. Uh, everything that goes storing a lot of great information and not only can you access it, but your customers can access it so they can, again, get updates on orders, place reorders. Um, it's really an all in one connected system. I agree. Well, Zach, I think that your demonstrations were just so thorough that no one has any questions for us. <laughs> so I think we did a great job with that. So this concludes our um, Deco Network 101. Oh, we do have some more questions here. Sorry, I don't want to miss any. Scroll down. Okay, we have another one here that says, we are new to Deco. I'm finding existing customers do not process orders via the website. They are leaving the site as they cannot get their head around the designer. Um, so do you have anything to say to that, Zach, that might be of a solution for the online um, designer? There's many variables that can go into it. Um, as far as converting um, an order through the website, the biggest mistake I often see is just, it's not simple enough. The goal is in as few clicks as possible to select a product and then request a quote or place an order using the online design tool. 
Now, um, little things such as just having um, helpful tips on the designer page, which are not hard to add, such as step one, select a product. Step two, add text and or clip art. Step three, select your sizes. Step four, check out. But if you put 2000 products in front of your customers, it, it's really hard to do any of that because they can't make a selection. So the answer to that question comes down to, um, you, it, it's something you'd have to look at and, and see what may not be going um, right. And yeah, it, it's, it's not an all in one just uh, answer there. There's a lot of different variables that could go into it. Um, the way, you know, and I'm not just trying to push people into needing to hire a consultant, but the, the analogy I like to use is a lot of us use Photoshop um, in the industry. And if you opened up Photoshop for the first time and you, you're overwhelmed, there's, there's so many features, there's so many things going on. And over the course of several years, you get better at it and you, you be, eventually might become a master. But if, if you could be utilizing that software a lot quicker by working with someone like myself who's built a ton of websites and can look at your Google Analytics and help learn from your traffic and help those you know, potential orders be closed into official orders. One of the best things you can do for your website is put a live chat tool on there. If somebody were to come into, you know, a shop or a retail environment, typically the door goes da ding for a reason. You are supposed to engage your customers. If your customers are coming to your website and you have no engagement, it's going to make things a little bit harder than it might need to be. Uh, we're talking about placing custom orders and a lot of the times they're high value. So screen printing, for example, the average screen print order is several hundreds of dollars. And I'm not saying that screen print orders aren't paid um, through websites. I mean, I fulfill a lot of direct screen print orders every day, but screen printing is often a quoted process. One off direct a garment, I don't want to quote. I really want that just to be an order. So you got to think about um, what is the average dollar amount order. Uh, sometimes just having the customer submit quote request is the better route to go, depending on what processes you're offering. Um, but yeah, there's many factors that can go into it, but I've worked with a lot of very successful shops who get a lot of orders um, for different, pretty much every decoration process you can imagine. Um, but yeah, it, it often just takes a little bit of help um, and finesse to get the best results. Thanks, Zach. Joshua Parr has a question for you. How do you handle an order or purchase order if a product or color was entered incorrectly? Purchase purchase orders issued and sent to apparel vendor. Also, how are product returns handled? Okay, so the first question is, anytime an order is changing, as far as like the shirt color, you really want to change it in the order itself. So if there's any updates, you know, let's say the customer changes the shirt color, you need to change it here in the order. That way it's truly saved and it's passed across all production staff members. I don't typically want to just put in a little internal note over here. Hey, the customer wants red instead of black. It's not visual. Um, that's what's going to reduce mistakes is having uh, the visual. If the customer wanted, you know, some red, some black, instead of these 36, again, copy the line item, but your line items need to be exactly what the customer wants if you're trying to um, make sure you don't run into those mistakes. Um, as far as returns go, I never get asked that. And the reason is 99% of businesses in our industry don't accept a return. It's a custom printed product. Um, that is not to say I cannot um, refund the customer and so forth, but it's, I mean, it's so rare that I've ever seen anybody take back a product, store that inventory, try to account for it and use it for a future order. It's just very rare. 
um, but you can absolutely refund a customer their order. Um, so let me just cancel edits. And it's as easy as I can cancel the order and it'll refund or I can come over to payments and I could add a refund or credit to the customer. Hopefully that answers the question. Hopefully so. We have another question for you, for you from Ian Pollard as well. How do we go about adding full supplier CSVS from suppliers not on your system? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Um, <laughs> that absolutely possible. Just not the easiest thing always. So you can come over here to products. And then there is import, import products. And that's how you can import the CSV. Now, if I were to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is come up here and I'm going to type in import products and you're going to find a ton of great help articles. So how do I import products into Deku Network? This help article will tell me exactly what it is I need to do to be able to import those products. Um, if I'm being really honest, importing products is easily one of the more difficult things in the entire software to do. It is not the easiest thing. Um, also, you need to keep in mind that after you've imported the products, you still need to configure the decoration areas. If you upload a ton of products um, with images and all that, we don't know technically where the left or right chest is just based on an image that was uploaded. So the products that you upload, you still need to go into and update the decoration areas. Um, absolutely possible, just one of the more difficult uh, things to do in Deco. But you know what is important to remember is I can upload an image of any type of product. So if I'm a sign um, decoration shop and I sell a lot of banners, for example, I can upload rectangles or maybe I sell a lot of stickers and I want circle stickers. You can upload an image, whether it be of a product or just a shape, and then choose how the process is or the product is uh, price is configured. And um, yeah, it, it it's amazing. You can sell practically anything through Deco Network, whether it be decoratable or not. Um, but the CSV, definitely one of the most difficult things to uh, do in the software. Okay, Steve Hunter has a question for you. Zach, do you have examples of sites you have worked on for custom work? Yep, if you go to decoexperts.com, this is my consulting website. And up at the top, we have portfolio, homepage layouts, but if anybody shows me, hey, I want my homepage to look just like Custom Ink, it, through the drag and drop tools, it's really not that difficult. Um, and, and again, that's really what a lot of people have to realize. What you want and what you need out of your website are two different things. And just like Deco, I have multiple consulting packages. We all have different uh, budgets and different wants and needs. So I can build a website in as little as four hours and, and get you what you need to get launched. And then over time, if you want it to look bigger and better, you can uh, hire me for more time to do so. Um, but uh, yeah, you're, I, the biggest thing is just keep it as simple as possible. Um, get, let the products do the talking. You, most of my clients, they just need a really nice homepage and then we're making the tools that Deco has developed work as optimally as possible. I mean, a big portion of why we pay Deco Network is for the tools that they have invested in for us. Um, so, yeah, it, it, if you want to see some examples, you can come here. Deco has examples on um, their site. But just know that, you know, it, just like anything, it comes down to your budget and what you want and need. And um, it can be made possible. All right. Um, and then from Mike McCrell, so sorry if I pronounced your last name wrong. Uh, they have the question, how does the live ordering work with Samar? 
Does an email get sent to them and they enter in the order? Uh, yeah, essentially. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say that I, I know exactly, exactly how it works, but yes, you, um, there's two ways, actually. You can um, hit a, there is an email live send. So if we're back here in our products, we'll come into supplier account details and all of our suppliers are listed here. So let's come into Sanmar. And down here, I can put in my account information and um, it'll make the connection for me, but I can also, oh, where are you? When you're, when you're placing the order, you can choose to send it to your account rep if you want them to kind of enter it uh, for you. But uh, the live send, which you didn't see, well, let's come back, let's come back to our orders, sorry. But watch out, if I create an order, I can copy an order. So I'm gonna copy this as an order. We're gonna redo it. So we'll copy the order. Okay, we're back to step one, raise a PO. So let me save. Continue, let's raise purchase order. So raise a new PO. Now, the Gildan 2000, they typically have inventory of, okay? You can see right here, you saw that little load and you see right here, live ordering. If Sanmar is out of a product, it is going to warn us that there is inventory problems. So we do have inventory live here at this step if you're using live ordering. After you have um, saved your final list, you can um, send purchase order live, which automatically goes to them. And I don't think anybody's rekeying it in, or you could email it. And at that point, I do think your rep is keying it in for you. All right. But, but again, I, I try my best to answer that question. A lot of things in the software are always updating and I have to raise support tickets all the time. If you ever have a question like that, that's what the support staff is there for. And again, with one version, an answer might be something. And then as Deco Network updates, that answer changes. And the support staff is great at keeping up with those changes. I've used the software for 11 years. And one, I still run into situations where I can't remember how something works or it's just changed over the years. Yeah. So. Joshua Parr also goes back um, about the returns question, and he says that his question about returns was in reference to actual apparel purchase order to the vendor. And so he wanted to know um, that he noticed that it still shows up as it still needs purchase and it's not updating in the purchase order. So any advice on what he should do differently or? Um, no. I, I honestly, I, I don't want to just give a um, quick answer that I haven't had the time to think through. I would probably raise that support ticket and, and ask client services. They can look at a specific order as well, even deeper than I can. Um, but if I've got to return an order to a vendor, that's not on Deco. That's on you and the vendor. The vendor should give you an RMA number to return the merchandise. Um, if anything, it's a canceled order or a refund and Deco for that line item. Um, Deco's not going to produce an RMA for us to send back to Sandbar. Hopefully that again answers kind of the question, but I'd raise support ticket to make sure you get the perfect answer. And do remember this, uh, the support staff of Deco, you have diff most of them can answer the majority of questions. Some questions are better answered by certain individuals. I've not dealt with a lot of returns. I would be um, just making up kind of more of a, a, what I think. Raise a support ticket and you will get the exact answer. Yes. Cornell Burnett asks, does Deco Network software have the capability for all over print? That's a great question. That is a very great question. 
Um, yes, yes, I have definitely helped several all over printers, whether it be cut and sew or just large format heat pressing. Um, it is possible, absolutely. If I'm going to be completely straightforward, I have seen websites with design tools that were built specifically for an all over print shop. And that would be, I've seen, for example, wrestling singlets. They're pretty much all, all over sublimated. And I've seen websites where I can design a custom singlet and change the piping um, color and X, Y, Z. And it, it, so that works. I mean, it, it was custom developed. I've never seen any solutions like deco for all over shops, but um, to your, to the question, yes, I can upload an image of a front of a shirt and a back of a shirt and then drag artwork on it and simulate what it's going to look like as an all over product. I absolutely can. But the thing about all over printing and a lot of the times it's cut and sew, it's a made to order manufactured product more so than buying a blank from like Sanmar and heat pressing it. Now you can, it absolutely can. Um, but yes, I mean, I would show the front of a shirt. I'd show the back of the shirt. I can add the customer's artwork myself in Business Hub, or they can do it on the design tool. Um, it is absolutely possible. But if I'm being really blunt, I have seen design tools specifically built for big companies for just their website. Um, so I just don't want anybody thinking that, you know, that's the exact solution. Deco's design tool, though, will make it work. I've helped over a dozen cut and sew companies um, offer all over sublimated products, whether it be masks, shirts, pants, doesn't matter. All right. Greg Norton asks, how can you handle decoration processes that are outsourced to more than a few different service providers? Okay. Um, there's a few different ways you can do that. My favorite way is one, to work with somebody who's already on Deco Network, um, if you can. The reason why I say that, and Deco's got a large network of decorators and most of us in the industry don't see each other as competition. So the first thing I would do if you haven't already and you can access it up here from the dashboard, is join the Deco Network user group. You're gonna find a lot of great other decorators who don't see you as competition and would love to help you in any way and put a lot of them, a lot of people are on Deco Network, they're contract decorators. They're looking for other decoration shops to partner up with. And there's a lot of users of the software scattered all across the country. Um, why I bring up, it's a nice, it, it's perfect to work with somebody in the Deco Network community is because within the production or the settings so again this goes into you know how far can we push the software well we can do a lot so if i come into production order settings we have outsourced production and this allows me to connect my business hub with another business hub and when an order is placed it is as simple as instead of marking it as production complete for example so come back to my list view you don't see it over here at the moment because we have it connected with another business hub, but I can select an order and I could sort by process first, and then I can outsource production and choose which other Deco Network user I want to send that order to. It then comes directly into their business hub, just like any other order, making it very easy for them to be able to process and you're both being updated as everything's occurring. So um, it's a lot easier, in my opinion, when you work with others in the Deco Network community. There's tons of contract decorators. If you um, don't have somebody that, that does it, there, there's still a few options. One, I can, um, when I'm in an order, I can download selected worksheets. If I do it as individual files, it'll download a zip folder of the worksheet and the artwork. So if I want someone to process this two piece order and I download the uh, zip folder like I just did, it's gonna contain the order worksheet and the artwork that goes with it. So I give someone that, that should be almost everything they need. 
Another way you could do it, and again, it depends on your relationship and everything else. Another thing you could do is actually set up that other business with an account so that they can access the orders through your business hub. And you can, for each account, you can set their role. And their role determines how much of the software they can gain access to. So if you're an administrator, you get access to everything. If you are a production manager, you only view production. If you are a sales manager, you gain access to sales and service. If somebody is a production and a sales manager, they gain access to all of it. So what you could do is you could make them a production team member. Orders come in, you can then assign them to that individual. And when they log into Deco, or essentially, they're only going to see Business Hub. They're only going to see the orders you've assigned to them. And all they can really do is download the artwork and update where it's at in the process. And that's it. So th there are many different ways. It, it's just, um, it just depends on the client and the relationship, uh, what will work best for that situation. So There's a lot of problem solving uh, that can go on. And that that's more of what I do than anything else is I teach um, how to use the software and mold it. And I problem solve. Everybody decorates products differently. Every It's a beautiful thing about the, our uh, industries. There's a lot of different revenue routes you can pursue to make money. And it, they're just all different. And I, I, I've heard them all. I mean, I've had thousands of conversations with users of the software. At this point, uh, I've pretty much heard it all. One of the only things is I don't hear many returns. Um, so sorry, I don't have a better answer for that one. That's all right. We have one last question for you, and this is from Steve Hunter. Some people have tutorial videos to help them guide their customers through how to place an order. Are you able to help with this? Yes. Yes, it's, let's go back to the design tool question. What I like to do is I like to make a branded two, three minute video that the customer can easily watch and get a better understanding how to use the design tool. I'm not saying that you have to have one to make it possible for customers to be able to place an order, but um, yes, absolutely. Um, I, I've created a lot of white, we say white labeled, uh, branded videos of, hey, we're on your website. Your logo starts at the beginning, it ends at the end, and this is how you use the design tool. Um, so yes, um, that is definitely possible. Something that even Deco Network doesn't know about, um, okay, is when it comes to the design tool, it can be custom coded to look different. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that the current design tool is not, doesn't work. It, it, it definitely does work. But there are a few of us in the Deco Network community who have been kind of thinking about how we could make the design tool maybe sometimes work a little bit better. And what I will share with you is um, I've hired a developer. We have created a second looking version of the design tool. And here in uh, January, we will start licensing it as a one-time purchase. I can't tell you what that's going to be yet. It's not going to be anything crazy. But if somebody essentially wants to use a different looking design tool on their website, it will be available um, to them through just purchasing a one-time custom code. I don't like to add a bunch of custom code to websites. The, the Deco Network websites have drag and drop tools. The only time I add custom code is sometimes to the header or if I'm trying to um, make a feature like the design tool look a little bit different. So just moving around, you know, how to add text, how to add um, upload a design, little things like that, it sometimes does make the ordering process uh, easier. And here in January, if someone would like to um, purchase a custom coded layout of the design tool, it is available. That's awesome, Zach. And how might people get in touch with you to acquire those services? First of all, you can always reach out to Deco Network. Deco Network, um, 
I am one of a couple uh, different, what we call Deco Pros. Um, I'm not the only one. Um, this is me, if anybody wonders. I will be at the Impression Show next month, um, helping Deco Network at their booth. Um, but Deco only works with a couple of us who've used the software for a decade and we can relate to the decoration businesses because we have done or do these processes still. So you can come up here, you can request any of this, or you can come to my website, which is Deco Experts, I'm sorry it's so confusing, uh, .com, and you can easily get in touch with me here. If you haven't taken advantage of Deco Network's orientation, um, reach out to Deco. It, you know, if you've signed up in the past couple months, but you kind of just ignored the email from Deco that said, hey, spend an hour getting an orientation, um, you can still take advantage of that. Anybody who does sign up for Deco, you get an hour with someone like myself um, to get you started. And um, an hour with me, I typically can prove to you, um, I know what I'm doing and I can help you in some way. The biggest mistake uh, people make when they sign up for complicated software is they don't take advantage of free resources. And again, sometimes you can, you can try to figure out how to get the most out of the software yourself over several months, or you can work with someone like myself in a week or two, you're using it like you intend. Um, that's my job. Wow, this was a great Q&A session and webinar. Thank you so much, Zach. And thank you everyone for tuning in with us today on our Deco Network 101 webinar. Um, this truly was a pleasure. And Zach, you truly are one of our best <laughs> Deco pros and um, consultants to work with. So if you have any other questions, again, as he said, feel free to reach out to him if you would like to acquire his services or through Deco Network directly. Um, and thank you again, everyone, for tuning in. This was such a great pleasure, Zach. Thank you. Thank you. And hopefully we get to see everybody at the ISS or one of the other shows that um, are coming up here in the very near future. Yes. So hopefully we'll see you then. All right, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.